Okay, so I'm going to get started here. So within, so within today's lecture, um, we're going to be talking about uh, a third type of modeling supported by any logic. Um, we've already talked about system dynamics. We've talked about agent-based modeling. And we're going to be coming back to them um, to talk about more general processes that apply to all sorts of models. So pro uh, processes that any logic supports on calibration, processes on sensitivity analysis, uh, intervention selection, outputting data, um, modifying a, a model through a UI, etc. Modifying model assumptions through a UI. But um, uh, today's lecture I'm going to be introducing maybe the first of two this week on the subject of a third type of modeling supported by any logic. Um, which is again subject to all those processes we've just mentioned. And that is th what's called the discrete event model. Um, this goes by the name <coughs> network modeling in any logic, which is somewhat confusing. Um, confusing because when we think <coughs> of networks, I most naturally think of, of agents with connections between them, for example. But what they really mean here is um, uh, sets of associated resources, physical locations, and entities uh, flowing through them. Um, which are associated with certain, certain well-defined processes by which those agents are, are handled. This might also be called process-centric modeling because we'll see that while, while it is, in a sense, at the agent level, we have individual agents distinguished as they flow through the model, the attention here, the focus, the, the, the mode of description really emphasizes the processes that operate on those agents. Agents are more passive than they have been in the sort of models we've looked at already. In instead of taking action and interacting with peers, they flow through a set of processes. And what we'll see is that um, this provides a very convenient way of, of, of speaking about processes that involve, for example, workflow, or routing of patients through a facility, um, and uh, a very convenient way of describing the, the set of conditions under which they end up going different directions. We're going to be talking about how this can be hybridized with agent-based modeling probably during our next, um, strict agent-based modeling during our next lecture. Um, but here what we're talking about is um, flow of patients or flow of entities through some sort of processes and how we capture irregular geometries. So um, to give you a sense of this, I'd like you to open up an example model within any logic. So specifically, I'd like you to go to the, um, to the examples page of any logic. And um, I'll just follow along so you can see it. And over on the left hand side in this examples page within any logic, on the left hand side, you'll see healthcare under examples here. And I'd like you to click on healthcare there, okay? Um, and you'll notice there's a set of uh, a set of examples which are are indicated here. I'd like you to click on uh, the trauma center here, <coughs> okay? So I'm going to actually insert um, insert uh, that picture there, okay? So. Um, if you click on trauma center, that should uh, that should load in. Okay, so I don't know why the, the video of this isn't isn't showing. Okay, um, so uh, once this is loaded, in, I'd like you to run it. And if you go down to simulation at the bottom, and you run this thing, what you'll see is actually a defined set of spatial locations. And uh, you'll notice that up in the upper upper mid part, there's a location where patients arrive. This patient was brought in via ambulance, so they're being routed to a particular location, and the uh, gurney is being taken back in a disembodied fashion. Um, what we see here is uh, a receptionist taking in a patient, registering them for the facility, 
and after some period of time they're going to go back and wait here and someone else takes them, takes them to a room. Um, you'll see that individuals are moving through the facility according to some paths, for example to meet with particular patients, some of different functions within the facility that associate them with certain resources, resources being things like rooms here, diagnostic equipment, um, and, uh, and resources like um, these rooms for, for nurses and, and for doctors or what have you. And you'll notice there's a variety of, of uh, descriptions down here at the bottom that describe, um, uh, describe different types of uh, individuals uh, within the facility. And what we'll see is that there's two really distinguished types of individuals within this facility. The first is patients. And you'll notice patients are indicated with these somewhat unflattering icons um, here of, of a patient is ambulatory and a patient who's not ambulatory needs to be transported on a gurney. Um, and then in contrast to them, there's a whole set of other types of individuals that, that whose job it is to assist the flow of patients through the facility. So patients come in, they come in via one of these two routes. You'll notice one has come in via the ambulance, one has come in via the, the walk-in route. And, and uh, these individuals over here are designed to assist the flow of patients through the facility through a set of processes. And these are all what is going to be called resources within these models, okay? And there's, a, there's an important contradistinction between the patients who are called entities, they're the ones at the focus of attention and are being escorted through, and these resources that exist to, uh, to be uh, leveraged for the sake of the patients. You'll notice there's other sorts of resources besides these individuals. Um, uh, specifically, there's uh, a set of resources uh, associated with rooms and, as I said, with equipment. And you'll notice these bars here indicate um, the level of use of a resource. So when an individual is in a room, that uh, resource is incrementing in terms of what fraction of the time it's in use. When they're not in a room, it's actually decreasing. Um, so. Uh, contrast between this case, for example, and this case where it's actually decreasing. So we have here a, a map of a facility and we see that we have a visual representation of a set of processes. So let's just dive for a moment into a description that lies behind this. So our task for today and probably for some of uh, next lecture is going to be to understand how do we specify what's going on there in a structured fashion? How do we specify it logically and how do we specify it visually? Okay, so let's go and, and look at uh, some of these elements. So if you go and you click on each of these um, elements over here to the left, you'll see some subcomponents. And in, the, in fact, these are various sub-elements of the entire um, <coughs> of the entire model. So there's an action component, there's an EC process, which as you'll see here, and I'll just uh, double click here to enlarge it to the full screen, involves an articulated set of steps. Um, so we, we have uh, incoming patients, they get associated with some room, that's what this seizing is, they move to that room with a nurse, there's a PA tech, a physician's assistant technician, um, or physician's assistant who prepares them. And then, does anyone want to guess what this is here? What this this element is here? What do you think that does? Yeah, it's a condition. And basically it determines whether or not an x-ray is needed at that point. If an x-ray is needed, they get routed to an x-ray. You notice it's a true branch of this, they get moved to an x-ray room. Based on what I've said, what's a C's x-ray? What's what is C's x-ray, do you think? Well, they have to reserve an x-ray for them. They can't just go in and take it over. They have to wait until some patient 
slot is available that, into which they can be slotted. So they need to be slotted into there to reserve it, as it were, to be associated with it for some period of time. And then they're moved to the x-ray under that condition, they're processed, and it releases the x-ray and waits for x-ray results. The doctor reviews the x-ray results right away, and then it's determined whether or not a specialist is required. Notice if they didn't need an x-ray, they'd come down in the same place. And if so, they need to be treated by a specialist, otherwise treated by a physician's assistant and discharged. And then they get moved back um, and, I believe, escorted out of the facility. Okay, um, so that's one subcomponent. Um, there's others, too. There's, a, there's an ED component, um, which uh, is, I believe, handling, um, in one case, EMS patients, so from uh, paramedics, um, delivery with ambulance and then regular patients. What we see here in general is a logical mapping associated with the, uh, the, the processes by which individuals are treated within a facility. Okay? It's process-centric. We focus on describing the logic associated with the processes that, that are operating on a patient, on an entity, as they flow through the system. Um, and this is a very convenient language that's presented here for describing processes. It's a very rich um, language. And, and individual entities move down these, these lines and among these processes. Now, there's additional elements behind this. Um, for example, uh, there's, a, there's a whole set of paths. Well, perhaps I should even describe, before I describe the, the paths, I should note that there's a set of resources uh, associated with this uh, facility, and I'm going to have to look where they are here um, within the facility. Um, I see there's uh, there's some elements up there. Let's just zoom out here, um, and we should be able to see a set of resources. Um, hmm, I don't see where they've placed them here, but. Um, uh, here, here's an example resource. Here's a triage nurse resource. Um, and a triage nurse resource has a certain capacity. There's a certain number of more or less interchangeable triage nurses who are on staff. Here there's just one at a time, but we could increase this. And by increasing this, we might be able to handle more patients at once, for example, because this triage nurse can handle one entity at a single time. And we might be able to increase that so they can handle their multiple nurses, therefore they can handle multiple resources at the same time. Um, so there's uh, resources associated with this that, that um, dictate constraints essentially over patients flow through the facility. They need a resource, say access to an x-ray, and if there's only three of them, they may have to wait their line in line for the next available x-ray. In addition to that, there's resources associated with locations, such as these, as these rooms here, and we can see, we'll see in a bit how those are defined. Finally, there's a set of representations visually for what's going on. This is all by way of a, pr a preview. We're going to come back and see in detail how these things work, but you'll notice there are these set of, of paths delineated through the facility. These paths are the paths by which individuals move around in the facility. So if you watch those icons in their detailed movement, you would find that they were moving on exactly these paths through the facility. So they come in here with the ambulance, come in here with the walk-in, etc. And we have various junctions between paths here. Turns out some of these paths, such as these paths um, that, that are located out here, actually are used to distinguish resources, to mark the locations associated with resources. Okay, so this is what I term process-centric modeling, when any logic terms network-centric modeling, and what is commonly known as discrete event modeling. What we're going to do now is to have a lecture on, on how one builds up those models and